straight down on me But I don't wanna go Don't wanna die alone All these places in my No hope, angry tears. Millions missing, open your eyes. I'm one of many stars in the sky. Millions missing, angry tears. M.E. Too many years, brothers and sisters, open your eyes. 
We are many stars in the sky. We are many stars in the sky. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Millions missing unknown. Our power today we own. Our song together coming home. Millions missing, angry tears, M.E. Too many years, brothers and sisters, open your eyes. We are many stars in the sky. We are many stars in the sky. Oh, 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 oh,
those brown eyes, yeah You're the one that I desire When we wake up And then we make love It makes me feel so nice, oh You're the water when I'm stuck in the desert You're the talent, all I take when my head hurts You're the sunshine on my life I just wanna see, I just wanna see How beautiful you are You know that I see it I know you're a star Where you go I follow If you love me, won't you say something? 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 two novels, Little Eden Book 1 and Little Eden Book 2. They're both on Amazon as Kindle and in paperback. I'm an indie author because having Emmy, I can't meet anyone's deadlines, never mind my own. I've had Emmy for nearly 30 years, mild, moderate and severe in a roller coaster manner throughout all that time. I can only write for about an hour a day on a good day and I can go for weeks, months, even years without being able to write at all. But it keeps my mental health and emotional health uh, a little bit more buoyant when I can write. I didn't just want to write novels, I wanted to help raise awareness for ME. So although the novels are mainstream in the sense that anyone can enjoy them, 
and they are a rollicking good read. They're quirky, they're funny, they're thrilling, they're full of mystery and romance and history, but also my main heroine has ME CFS. I don't really believe people want to be bombarded with lots of negative information. I think they get empathy fatigue. So I believe that weaving the information about Emmy into something light-hearted, fun, and um, giving people something else to think about while learning about Emmy is probably the best way to go. So I hope that people are learning a bit more about Emmy through my novels. I know my readers have said they have so far, but the problem I have is trying to get enough people to read them. So there we go, Little Eden, book one and two, and I'm just about to hopefully finish book three by the end of the year. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy reading them at some point. My name is Sarah Lamy. I've had Emmy on and off for 25 years. I was first diagnosed in 1997 when I had a severe ME episode. I probably had ME for about four or five years, but at that time I was having a severe episode. I was mainly housebound and bedbound for two and a half years. At that stage, I had to give up of university. But at age 21, I was able to restart. And slowly I regained my strength and almost returned to 95% or 100%. I've had other autoimmune conditions join me on my journey throughout my life and in the last year I've had a diagnosis of another ME severe relapse. While we were working out the diagnosis and when I was still occasionally going out I was able to take the photograph that is above me from one of our rare trips to one of the little quiet beaches where we live captured by the way in which the crystal ball would turn the image upside down. So many of our lives have been turned upside down by the condition we live with. And I was also fascinated by the driftwood that was on the beach. This former tree is a thing of beauty. Our lives are flipped upside down in many ways and yet there is still much beauty in it. Thank you for allowing me to submit this art as part of Severe Emmy Awareness Day.
and welcome to my office. My name's Jody. I recently had to quit teaching and so I've spent this summer, yes, almost all summer, trying to find creative endeavors to redirect all of this, well, all of the energy I have that's extra. I'm sure you understand. I was a Spanish teacher and so you've got my homage to Frida and Mexican heritage and some of the places I've been. And as usual, it's still not done. Here is an incredible Wonder Woman wearing her mask. Since I have an immunodeficiency, that will be me forever as well. And here is my sacred heart. I'm using old jewelry to decorate. Every time I apply for a new virtual job, I put one up. And I'm not sure how much you know about the great Frida Kahlo, but I have a mask for her. I've also bought specialized fabric. This one's Stranger Things, the TV show my brother, my son and I love. And this right here, Hamilton for my husband and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one for my cousin who's a lawyer and one for her baby Ruth. And some for my colleagues in the school colors and others for students and other teachers. We make masks so that we can protect those who are still in school. In addition to that, I have an amazing camera on my phone and I love to take pictures and use uh, photography as an expression. It may take me longer to do every single step, but it's okay. Sometimes we just gotta rest and pick back up where we left off. And so I wish you all the best in your journey.
I don't need to be any stronger Letting go might take me a little longer than I had planned But holding steady Looking for a soft place to land This day will never come again The sun will never shine quite the same Because my eyes will be different afraid to try another day on all of this change takes my breath away hold my place hold this moment in grace hold my place this moment in grace two poems. Um, one of them is from an earlier stage in my illness, and um, the other one is more recent. The first one is called My Husband's Sick Wife. He brings me ice bags to cover my burning eyes warm bags for my incessant, incessantly freezing feet. He keeps the closet stacked with tissues. When I cry, he sits quietly and hands them to me. Sometime he finds he feels nothing. Sometime he finds himself sobbing with me. When people ask about my condition, he makes his eyes flat, his shoulders round, and murmurs, not well, not well. Sometime he spends all day thinking of a way to make me smile. He brings flowers and bland foods and sweet milky tea. He carries these things upstairs and downstairs on a tray we used to use for entertaining. Sometime he secretly hates me for my need. Sometime not so secretly. He shuffles the bottles and tubs and tubes of ointments and tinctures and creams, looking for something promising mercy or ease. He forgets the difference between anger and grief. He forgets the difference between me and the disease. He remembers me in a blue velvet dress at his master's graduation, 
lit with love for him and all our possibilities. He weeps alone in his car for everything that should have been. Occasionally, as I attempt to eat the food, he has pureed or cut up into small pieces, propped up in the darkened bedroom amidst rumpled sheets. We forget I am his sick wife for a moment. Think we are again just a couple at a dinner table at the end of an unremarkable day. And we laugh. The sound, sharp and shameful, comes back to slap us for our heresy. And then this is the little one, which is about what keeps me here. Mercy. We all know mercy when she arrives. She shines. She flips the switch in the darkened room. She sees us. She places a hand on our chests. She gentled us beneath her palm of light. My name is Nina Alf. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue in 2013. Since then, I've been diagnosed with many more ailments related, and I spent two years in bed. The, what I want to share is uh, some of the photos of this orange tree bag that clung to a tree outside my window. Um, I have 365 photos, but there's only time to share a few very briefly, and I'd like to read a poem. But I, I would like you to know that I was very energetic, and I used to be... Uh, relied upon as an educator, a researcher, a visual artist, an author, a daughter, a wife, an aunt, a friend. I could drive anywhere. I, I would clean the whole house. I was learning how to really sing. And um, I rarely experienced pain. I had been a waitress, a jeweler. I loved to walk for miles, stay up late, play tennis and dance. I had so many plans that I never intended to retire. Here's the poem. The Orange Tree Bag. I am stuck inside, looking out at the world. I document 365 days with photos of the orange tree bag. I disappear, but the bag does not. I am stuck in my room behind a window. The orange tree bag is now my companion. I look for it when I get out of bed, after everyone has gone to work. What is wrong with me? Too many things. Every day the orange bag clings to the tree, moves in the sunlight, holds on in the wind, gets drenched in the rain, and then dries. The bag is outside, but I am not. The orange bag that hangs in the tree survives the winter. One day the bag is gone, but I am still here in my room. What's wrong with me? So many things. Thank you.